Hey, last week Eric and I celebrated a pretty exciting milestone. We've been married for three years. Yay! Yeah, celebrating your anniversary in quarantine is pretty weird, but Eric and I have never been huge on big dates anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. We made a pillow fort and ordered takeout from our favorite Italian restaurant and watched Atlantis. It was pretty epic for quarantine. Anyway, Eric and I have never been great at cooking. I'm not gonna lie, we eat frozen food or canned soup or like hamburger helper for most of our meals, but we tried to do a nicer meal like once every grocery trip. Figuring out which recipes work best for us has been a challenging process, not made any easier by the fact that I'm a vegetarian and Eric isn't. I'm not the type of person to try to force my vegetarianism onto other people, but it can be tricky to find recipes that are super appealing to both of us. But sometimes we get lucky and find a recipe that has no meat in it, but still manages to make Eric do this thing where he'll be like, babe, I forgot how good this pasta salad is. <laughs> so without further ado, here are some of the recipes that we've really been liking over the past three years. Hey. Hi. Thanks for helping me with this part. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so we'll start with the easiest recipe, taco soup. Yes. Yeah. It's super easy. Soup. Super uh, easy. I feel like you did that on purpose so I can make a pun. I did, I did not. How did we find this recipe? I think it was actually just one of my friends on Facebook. It was like pre five minute crafts cooking where they like <laughs> yeet a bunch of crap into a bowl and just give you vague instructions on how to do it. It mm -hmm. was before that, and it was just so it an image. it had actual measurements. <laughs> right, it had actual measurements. It was just an image of what cans of food you need. Quick, easy, succinct. And we just like saved that picture to a Google Doc so we can always find it. Yeah. And it's super easy. For this recipe, you're gonna need a carton of vegetable broth. The recipe actually calls for a can of vegetable broth, but I guess we really like broth. We definitely need more than just a can. One can of black beans, kidney beans, pinto beans, corn, and rotel. Two cans of diced tomatoes. A packet of taco seasoning and a packet of ranch seasoning. And as you desire it, meat or some sort of meat substitute. We personally skipped the meat this go around. The first step is to add all of your vegetable broth, or I guess you can add as much as you want. Again, we like brothier soup. And go ahead and put the stove on a medium high heat so that it's already good and warm by the time you add the other ingredients. This recipe is super easy. You just have to open the cans and add them to the broth. Personally, we like to rinse the juice off of the black beans and we strain our pinto beans, kidney beans, and corn. Then for the ingredients, we don't strain. In our case, Rotel and our two cans of diced tomatoes. Don't forget your ranch and taco seasonings. Give it a nice stir. Bring it up to a full high heat. And once it's up to a boil, it's pretty much ready to serve. I personally am a big fan of eating taco soup with tortilla chips to dip in it. This time we actually ate it with some Irish soda bread because we made this around St. Patrick's Day and the soda bread was on sale. Oh, by the way, please excuse my paint covered pants. We had painted the house earlier that day. But yeah, that's enough from narration me. <laughs> Let's go see what Eric and I actually have to say about this recipe. In terms of easiness, I would probably give this one a 10. Yeah, oh, 10, definitely. Yeah, I would say probably when it has like the fake meat in it, I would give it like an eight out of 10 and when it has just beans and corn. I guess it's like a seven or an eight, like a 7.5. Mm -hmm. I'd just give it a nine in general. Really? Yeah. You like, I like it that it, much? Yeah, I like it both. Wow. Equally, like it's good. It takes like maybe 30 minutes altogether to make. It's super cheap, cause like it's just a bunch of canned goods. Sometimes you add meat, sometimes I add fake meat, sometimes we do nothing. And I, I mean, I, sometimes I even kind of prefer that cause I could just enjoy the flavor more. The meat doesn't take up space in the soup. But yeah, when we do use like two different kinds of meat, we'll just like add everything together and then separate it into separate pots mm -hmm. before he puts the meat does in. whatever, like you brown your meat or whatever. Mm -hmm. The thing I like about fake meat is you can just add it to the pot cause it's already cooked. You don't have to worry about browning it. Ugh, so easy. I think it makes like four servings. Like you could stretch it out for longer if you have smaller servings. Um, but yeah, about four. It's good with chips. It's good with bread. It's good. It's good. The end. Edamame pasta salad is my favorite recipe on here, I think. Not trying to like sway your opinion. I mean, it's great. It 
it's very short prep time. It's a really good leftover because you don't have to heat it back up. It is really good leftover. You it gets better it into, yeah. leftover. Right, because then, it, then everything the soaks juices. up the Italian dressing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this recipe came from this vegetarian cookbook that my mom got me for Christmas one year. I gotta be honest, a lot of the recipes in this book are very vegetarian. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Very uh, like soybean tofu, like very like meat substitute. Look what vegetarian. we can do to kind of approximate meat. Yeah, exactly. But the ones where they aren't trying to, to imitate meat, mm -hmm. a lot of them are really, really good. And one of those is this hearty soybean and cheddar pasta salad, or as we just call it, edamame, edamame pasta salad. salad. <laughs> you shortened it too much. <laughs> now, full disclosure, with this recipe, we do not use the recommended ratios. So reminder that the original recipes are in the description. So if you want to check that out, feel free. But I'm going to show you guys how we make it. One cup of uncooked penne pasta, a bag of frozen shelled edamame. Make sure you saw it before you start mixing everything together. A cucumber, a tomato, an onion, and a bell pepper. Six ounces of cheddar cheese and three quarters to a full cup of Italian dressing. You're gonna start by cooking your penne pasta according to the instructions on the box. In my experience, this gives me just enough time to chop up and mix in all the other ingredients. With the cucumber, we personally prefer to cut it into quarters so it forms those sort of rounded triangle shapes. I guess we kind of do the same thing with the tomato. Like it kind of forms these cube triangle sort of tomato slices. Of course, take out the stem of your bell pepper. And with the bell peppers, I usually start by slicing them up, but I don't like to have the whole slices in the salad. I normally end up chopping them into, again, sort of little squares. Peel your onion and surprise, surprise, I also don't like to have giant onion slices in this salad. So I cut those into kind of medium sized squares as well. Go ahead and mix together all the vegetables that you've cut so far. Don't forget to add your edamame. I just add it straight from the bag. And I just washed my hands, so I just went ahead and mixed it with my bare hands. This step is a little bit extra, but we like to have fresh grated cheese in this. The actual recipe calls for cubes of cheese, but I, I always hate hitting like a giant cube of cheese when I'm eating a salad. So we grate it instead. That way you have a little bit of cheese in every bite. And they come in eight ounce blocks instead of six ounces. So normally I grate it until it's about this size. Uh, uh, no, normally I grate it until it's about this size. Give it a nice mix and add your Italian dressing. I started out going for three quarters of a cup and wound up adding a full cup because Eric and I just, we really like our Italian dressing. Give it another mix through and then go check on your penne pasta, which should be ready at this point. Go ahead and strain it and run it through some cold water. You don't wanna get any melted cheese in your pasta salad. Or maybe you do, I don't know. You do you. Mix your pasta in and then it's good to go. It's not the easiest, no. especially because like this time I lucked out and there was pre-shelled edamame, yeah. but that's not always the case. But also like, I so don't care about sitting down in front of the TV or watching YouTube videos and just like shelling edamame for 30 minutes. Like mm -hmm. it's not hard. No, it's not. It doesn't feel like cooking when mm -hmm. you're like shelling something in front of the TV. In a way it's easy because you just mix everything together and like you don't have to worry about the proportions being mm -hmm. right. Like it's so easy to just like, yeah, it looks right. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those things that you can really visualize and not screw it up. Mm -hmm. So in that way, it's easy. I would give it like a seven, I guess. In terms or, of easiness? No, I would give it an eight. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like the easiest, but it's also hard to mess up. In terms of tasty, mm -hmm. I would, I kind of want to give it a 10. Uh, I really like it. I would give it like an eight or a nine. You like taco soup more than this? Yeah. Taco soup is just canned vegetables. Okay, see, this is why we did this. I did not know that. <laughs> wow. No, I was it's, so it's like it's, it's really not too expensive, especially if you, you know, find that store in your city that has the cheaper produce. It makes like four to six servings. Yeah, yeah I'd about. say four to six. And this one is definitely, you know, again, we eat it as a whole meal. I will just eat a bowl of edamame pasta salad. Mm -hmm. but it could totally go with a side to like oh, a sandwich. Oh, it's a great or... side dish. I mean, we've brought this to Potluck and people have used it as a side dish. It is my favorite thing to bring to Potluck, especially because if you're a vegetarian, you understand the struggle of going to a Potluck and just eating like a bunch of potato chips, but mm -hmm. you don't want to be that person who shows up and is like, hey guys, I brought quinoa burgers, you know? Right. It's a good crowd pleaser, but you will also still have something that's like hearty and substantial and vegetarian on your plate. 
So I majored in Spanish in undergrad, and a big part of majoring in Spanish is you learn about, you know, the culture of all the Spanish speaking countries. And part of that, of course, is the food. And one of my teachers was really big on Spain. Whenever we would have these like events where people would bring food from all these different countries, the Spanish teacher would always bring tortilla. And I loved Spanish tortilla. And I was like, that seems like really hard to make and weird and I don't know. And then I saw this sorted food video. One of the guys made a Spanish omelet, which was just Spanish tortilla. And I was like, wait, you mean to tell me that a Spanish tortilla is potatoes, onions, and eggs? That's all? Like, that's the easiest thing I've ever heard. So for the past year or two, I've been using this sorted food recipe to make Spanish tortilla. So I know, like, that's obviously the most gringo thing I can say. Maybe one day I'll find a more authentic Spanish tortilla recipe, but right now, uh, I'm just using this one. I, I was quite pleased with how it turned out and you really, really liked it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it a lot. For tortilla, you need eight eggs, three potatoes, an onion. We personally use either white or sweet, some olive oil, and some salt and pepper to taste. We use a lot. <laughs> the first step is, of course, to peel your potatoes. I am terrible at peeling potatoes. Don't come for me in the comments, but um, this is just the easiest way, in my opinion, to peel potatoes. It doesn't look pretty, I guess, in the actual tortilla, but it's easier and I don't know, the taste is the important part to me. Feel free to peel your potatoes like a normal person. Then you're gonna slice the potatoes. Now, tortilla literally means like little cake in Spanish. So when this is all together, it's gonna look kind of like a cake. That means the potatoes are gonna be layered on top of each other. So you don't want super thick slices of potatoes. I go about like half a centimeter to maybe a centimeter at the thickest. Then you're gonna heat about a quarter cup of your olive oil over a medium heat. Do that little thing to make sure it's covering the whole bottom of the pan. And then just add all of your potatoes. Again, they aren't all gonna be touching the oil. That's okay because the steam will cook them as well. Now this recipe says to salt and pepper to taste. I personally take like every opportunity to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I've never really felt like my tortilla was too salty or peppery. So from my personal experience, just really go crazy with the salt and pepper. Give it a bit of a shuffle to make sure all your seasonings in there and then add your lid and cook for about five minutes. While your potatoes are getting a head start, you can peel and chop up your onion. Again, I normally go for pretty thin slices and I just stick to the natural ring or C shape of an onion slice. Really break them up though, because you don't want giant clumps of onion in your tortilla. After five minutes, stir your potatoes up so that none of them get too brown. Maybe add a little bit more salt and pepper and then put the lid back on and cook for five more minutes. Once your potatoes have their head start done, you can add the onions. Make sure everything is nice and mixed in evenly and then put the lid back on and cook for another 10 minutes. While that's doing its thing, go ahead and crack open all eight of your eggs. You're gonna need the whites and the yolks. Give them a good whisk and add some salt and pepper to the eggs themselves. After your potatoes and onions have had their 10 minutes to cook, add them to the eggs that you just whisked and let that mixture sit there for about 10 minutes. Okay, now it's time to cook the whole thing together. First, add about a tablespoon of olive oil, again, making sure it coats the entire bottom of your pan, and then add your potato, egg, onion, salt and pepper mixture to the pan. You really want to shuffle all your ingredients. You don't want any potatoes sticking up. You want it to be a nice flat disc when it's done. But you're going to cook this mixture over a medium low heat for about 15 minutes. In my experience, even though the recipe says low heat, it doesn't mean like a super, super low heat. If you go too low, this next step is going to be really challenging. So I, I say medium low. <laughs> oh, I would rather my tortilla be a little bit burnt than be too runny and really hard to flip. And speaking of the flip, this is the hardest part of the recipe. Uh, the first thing I like to do is go around the whole pan and make sure that your egg mixture is nice and separate. That'll make the flip a lot easier. So just go in with your plate. Oh, nope. You need pot holders. Do not do this without pot holders. You will burn yourself. Okay, once you have your pot holders, go in with your plate, put it directly on top of your pan and flip it over. Pray that it doesn't fall apart. Okay, you got a little bit of eggness on the oven, but that's okay because everything stayed together and that's the important part. Scrape off any of the burnt bits because those are only gonna get more burnt. Add a little more olive oil to help with cooking at the other side and then just slide your tortilla back into the pot, now cooking the opposite side that wasn't getting cooked before. 
Put the lid back on and cook that side again over a medium low heat for about five minutes this time. After five minutes, again, put those pot holders on and put a new plate over the top of your pan to flip again. Spill a little bit more olive oil, egg juice everywhere, but, but it looks good, so it's worth the mess. <laughs> Cut out a slice or a square or whatever you prefer, and voila, there's your tortilla. Okay. I'm gonna talk about this point first because it's the only one I can really talk about uh -huh. and be fair. Uh, I love it. It's it's like a, yeah, I'll give it an eight. It's hearty. Mm -hmm. like I could take just a sliver for lunch and have that as my entire lunch for the day. They're not bad left over. How easy is it, would you say? I can't, I can't answer this because <laughs> I don't, I never make it myself. Yeah, so it's actually, this is one of those where the easiness and the price are like, one goes up and the other one goes down, you know, because the price is great. It's just eggs, potatoes, and onions. Like, it's like super cheap. The actual preparation is kind of hard because of the flip. It's hard and that there's a technique you have to master. So in terms of easiness, I would probably give this like a five. Man, how many servings does it make? Like eight? Yeah, I'd say like eight, because it's, it's it's about the size of a normal pie, and you can usually cut those into about eight pieces. Yeah, you'll like cut off like size. an eighth, and you're like, that looks small, but then you eat it, and it's like really yep. filling. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, don't so, pre-slice like, it, hmm. so it's like, if I'm only hungry enough for this much, I'll eat that much. If I'm hungry enough for like a huge slice, we'll eat that much, but it evens out to about eight, I think. We, we love Gruyere mac and cheese. We stand. Did I say it on mommy pasta salad was my favorite on this list? Yeah, I think you did. I still think it's my favorite, but like I really like Gruyere mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. Gruyere mac and cheese is objectively fancier, mm -hmm. but I don't like it as much. I don't either. Really? Yeah. Interesting. When you reheat it, the peppers are just slimy. Mm -hmm. There's breadcrumbs in this recipe also, and I feel like they're not as good mm -hmm. once you reheat it. Yeah. yeah, so there are some problems. But I feel like this is our go-to recipe when we have like company and mm -hmm. we want to look like we know how to cook. Yep. People that we've done this for are literally probably watching this. People say, you know, mac and cheese, it's like a side dish, but mm -hmm. like this is also like a main course. It's, it's, it's filling. It's filling, it's mm -hmm. loaded. But if he wants to make like something meaty for the meat eaters, he can. Mm -hmm. um, or we can just have Gruyere mac and cheese with like some veggies on the side and some rolls or whatever. You can taste that it has been cooked with alcohol in it. Yes, and it can. makes it taste fancy. Yeah. It's, it's good. For this recipe, you need three bell peppers, three cups of uncooked penne pasta, 10 ounces of Gruyere cheese, three tablespoons of flour, a cup of white wine. I guess you can get something really fancy here, but we normally just get whatever's cheap. Three quarters of a cup of whipping cream. Two cloves of garlic. You can use fresh garlic, but for this one, we decided to be a little bit lazy and used minced garlic. Half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and an eighth a teaspoon of nutmeg. And then to top it all off, half a cup of breadcrumbs and two tablespoons of butter. The first thing you're gonna do is bring your oven to a broil and broil your bell peppers. This usually takes about 20 minutes. At the same time, go ahead and start boiling the water for your penne. Add salt because uh, apparently that's what Italians do. While those two things are going, I normally just kind of sit on the couch and watch TV or YouTube or something while grating up the cheese. Once your cheese is grated, start to add three cups of flour for some reason. Then remember that the recipe called for three tablespoons and not three cups. So try your best to remove exactly 13 tablespoons worth of flour. Accept the fact that it's probably not perfect, but roll with it anyway and mix it all together. At this point, your peppers should be ready, so go ahead and take those out, and you're going to put them into plastic bags. Apparently this helps them kind of steam themselves, making it easier for you to peel the skins off later. And these are gonna sit for 20 more minutes. Since the peppers are done using the oven, go ahead and preheat it now to 350 degrees. My water started boiling right before that 20 minutes was up, so I went ahead and added my three cups of penne pasta. And then it was time to peel the peppers, remove the stems. The recipe says to remove the seeds. I don't really care about the seeds. Um, and slice up the peppers. And then it's time to start on your cheese mixture. So add a cup of wine. Oh, that's too heavy to do with one hand. <laughs> add a cup of wine carefully. Add your three quarters of a cup of whipping cream. 
add your two cloves of garlic, or in our case, two hearty tablespoons of garlic, and start bringing that to a simmer. As I was waiting, my pasta was ready to strain, so I went ahead and took it over to the sink and strained it. Once your wine, cream, and garlic are at a simmer, you're gonna add that cheese mixture from earlier. Get that all nice and stirred in, and then add your salt, cayenne, and nutmeg. And stir all that over a low heat for about two minutes. Once your cheese is nice and gloopy, you can add it to your big pot and add your pasta in there as well. Give that all a nice mix and then add your pepper slices in too. Mix it one more time and then you're gonna add this whole mixture to a greased casserole dish. Make sure it's nice and evenly spread out. And then you're gonna make your breadcrumb mixture. This is just half a cup of breadcrumbs and two tablespoons of melted butter. And then spread it evenly over your mac and cheese. I think this is easiest to do with my hands, but I guess you can spoon it over as well. Put the whole thing in the oven and bake at 350 for 20 to 30 minutes. With our oven, it turned out to take exactly 20 minutes. No matter how long it takes, you'll know it's ready when the edges start bubbling. At that point, you can take it out and then it's ready to serve. In terms of easiness, mm. uh, it's not super easy. No. I might say that this is harder than, tor like tortilla is hard because you have to perfect the flipping technique. Mm -hmm. This one is hard because you have to like keep an eye on it a lot. There's a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. Whenever we make this, we are both making it yeah. together. But yeah, there's a lot going on. I would give this maybe like a four in terms of easiness. I was gonna say about a five. Like, you know, it's not like a... Beef Wellington. It's not Beef Wellington, but it's not the easiest thing we've ever made. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But in terms of tastiness... Would I give this a 10? Uh, I would give it a 9 only because of... I don't like the leftovers. I was going to say a 10... Be, or not 10, an 8 because I don't like the leftovers. Yeah. yeah. I might give it like a 10 on day 1 and then a 9 on leftover mm -hmm. day. Which is probably another reason that we make it for company more than we make it for ourselves. Yeah. Because um, we, we just don't, don't like the leftovers. leftovers. But it is really good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I really like it a lot. I, I think it normally makes four servings-ish. Yeah, again, depending on like if you're eating it with a lot of other stuff. But mm -hmm. like when we are just eating it by itself, I think it gives us four meals. Mm. It's not the cheapest thing no, on No, I think list. it's one of, probably one of the most expensive I ones. think it's the most expensive, probably because of the wine. No, um, the cheese. The cheese, The cheese yes. is expensive. It is, it's more expensive. It's annoying. Chikoritos are family recipe <laughs> like not really uh my mom just found it in a magazine or something i think but i oh grew up God. on chikoritos what about you did you have chikoritos growing up is this like a common thing no i didn't i don't think i did okay um did you try my mom's chikoritos mm -hmm. though yeah i love them they remind me of uh flautas yeah they're kind of like flautas but like yeah. big yeah they're yeah. like clarinetes <laughs> <laughs> so we both really liked my mom's chikoritos mm -hmm. and one night we were like we haven't had chikoritos in a while, so we tried to make them and we kind of like put our own spin on the recipe. To make chikoritos, you need a box of puff pastries, a can of mushrooms for the vegetarian option, a can of diced green chilies, a teaspoon of this pepper vinegar sauce that we have not been able to find more of since moving north, but if you have it, definitely use it. This stuff is amazing. A quarter teaspoon of paprika, cumin, and pepper, a teaspoon of garlic salt, and then if you're doing a meat eater option, these are the seasonings that Eric used on his chicken. And then we have the chicken itself. The recipe calls for three cups of chopped chicken. Start by chopping up your green onions. The recipe calls for half a cup. For us, this turned out to be the entire bunch once we had it all finely chopped. Add this to a mixing bowl as you go. Open and add your diced green chilies. We don't strain it or anything. For me, the most important part of this recipe is the chilies, so I don't skimp on any chili flavor. Add in your cheese. The recipe calls for one and a half cups. We normally add a little bit of extra. Then add your pepper sauce if you have it, your garlic, pepper, cumin, and paprika. Give it all a good mix. And at this point, I bring in an extra bowl because Eric and I always make two separate versions. So I go ahead and add my mushrooms. I add the whole can to one bowl, put half the mix that I've made so far with the mushrooms, and once Eric's chicken is done, he'll add it to the Red Bull. Sorry I didn't get any clips of Eric and his chicken. I don't know, we didn't think to record his stuff. Preheat your oven to 425, and while that's preheating, chill your mixtures in the fridge. This just makes them easier to work with later in the process. Also, while your oven's preheating, you can prepare your puff pastries. So flour a work surface, 
and lay out all of your puff pastries from the box. Roll them out just to get a little bit more puff pastry action. The recipe suggests making each square nine inches by 12 inches. We actually went a little bit bigger because that gets us more chikoritos. Then cut this into rectangles. Again, the recipe says that you can make nine. We were actually able to make 15. Definitely be careful on this step. You're using a knife, possibly on a table. You know, I don't wanna be held responsible if you cut your table. Uh, be careful, guys, with, with knives. And then it's time to fill your pastries. The recipe says to place two tablespoons on each one. I guess we kind of did that. I just kind of eyeball how much looks right for each one. And then just using water, you wet the edges of the pastry. This makes it stick to itself when you're rolling it all together. Once they're all rolled, pop them in the oven and bake for 20 to 25 minutes. For us, it was 20. We actually stuck more to what the original magazine said. My mom kind of discovered a way of making them that, I don't know, I kind of like it more, but it's harder. <laughs> she uses like egg roll wraps, I forgot the name of them, yeah. um, but she uses those and then she fries them on a skillet. Mm. But I do I do like making them, it's just a little bit easier. Mm. How easy would you say this is? I, I don't think it's the easiest. No, but it's definitely not Gruyere difficult. <laughs> yeah, so. I would say like a six or a seven. Yeah, I'd say like seven. Rolling them up, correctly where they don't like leak. Yeah, that's kind of challenging. For me. But yeah, they're and okay. Then, Is the price good? I don't know how much it costs to make, ch to make chicken. To um, buy chicken. I mean, it's not that expensive. It's probably like the same price as doing like a taco night, mm -hmm. right? And you yeah. buy meat for yourself and I buy like some substitute for myself. And they make like 10 servings. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's so many of them. Yeah, they're good. So yeah, those are our favorite recipes that work for vegetarians and omnivores, meat, eat meat eaters non-picky meat eaters. <laughs> They're nothing too fancy, but I guess that's the point. I don't know, I wanted to share some recipe ideas for people who think that being a vegetarian is a lot of effort or gross or expensive. It's not. And for people like Eric, I feel like American culture really tells us that we have to have meat with like every meal, even breakfast, like we're expected to have bacon. And yeah, even if you like meat, these are great options to cut down on your meat consumption and still feel, I don't know, I feel like they're fulfilling meals. Anyway, I'll stop ranting, but if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I put videos out every other Friday. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.